The Holy Gospel for today comes from Mark, the 8th chapter, beginning with the 27th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went on with his disciples to the, into the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You're the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. For you're setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any wish to come after me, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake, for the sake of the gospel, will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and yet forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in, in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me know if you've heard this phrase before, sticks and stones might break my bones, but... That's right. Words are... I heard something else. What would you say? Names? Well, there you go. Words, names. I bet there's many different ways we could think of it. But we are, we're told that, you know, none of that thing can hurt us. Uh, words have a lot of power. You think not, those words can't hurt sometimes? Okay. If you're in that boat, imagine if instead of starting the sermon with sticks and stones might break your bones, I started the sermon like this. I hate you all. You're all horrible people, and I don't like you anymore. Ow! Okay, let me clarify before anybody tunes me out and starts leaving. I like you. I really do. And I do love you. So please forgive me for that. But if I had started a sermon like that, you'd be like, ouch! It would hurt, wouldn't it? Words can have power. And I bet if, if we went around the room and, and thought about this, I'll invite you to raise your hand for a second. You don't have to tell me. Has there ever been a time somebody has said something or done something in your life in which it has hurt like that? It feels as if it, it has cut you to the core. Maybe it feels like you died a little bit because somebody said this to you. I see a few timid hands. I'm going to assume everybody's raising a hand in their head at least. If we've all had somebody say something like that to us, where the words are spoken, and that weapon is used against us. Now, in all fairness, since I said those things to you, I should give you the opportunity of a lifetime to not say something, but do something back to me in which you can say nana nana boo boo. I want you to, to stick out your tongue. Pastors don't ask you to do this very often, and you get to stick your tongue out at me, so there. So please do it. Just stick it out for a second. I know it feels silly, but th do it. Yeah. That right there is what works with the words, right? And whether we stick it out at somebody and use it like that, or we use it for words that tear us down, that tongue right there does an awful lot. It can build up. It can tear down. It can do. It can praise. It can curse. And James is pointing that out in today's scripture lesson. James says all these things, there's the bits in the horse's mouth, you could steer a boat, but the tongue is a small member that boasts great exploits and can set quite the fire. It can set a fire ablaze, and it is uncontrollable. That's really hard to think about, isn't it? That that tongue right there is uncontrollable. Or is it that hard to think about how uncontrollable a tongue is? I bet maybe you can, besides thinking of the instances that you have had something told to you, have you ever done it to somebody else? Whether with your tongue, or with your fingers, texting, typing, speaking, doing something behind somebody's back. I bet there's ways in which the tongue has been used to destroy. 
There was a Skip Guys video that we watched on Wednesday night that walked through a couple different things and showed the tongue at work. And we're not going to watch it today. It's a little, little too long for Sunday. But in that video, there was two things that could be called, considered very offensive. Number one, the first time they went through the conversation, there's a lot of this. Hey, did you know that beep? And then all this something and something beep. And usually when we hear beep, we associate it with some sort of a curse, don't we? It usually gets bleeped out on TV because those aren't words you want to hear on the TV. But when they go back and they take the bleep away, there are things describing somebody, calling somebody something that they are not, judging, doing all sorts of things in which the tongue can be as if poison. James calls that tongue, that little thing in your mouth that helps us speak and enunciate, poison. You can't be tamed. Many a times we can do it in our heads. We might do it with our mouths behind. We might do it on the keyboard. You name it. It can be something that tears down and destroys. It can be like a fire in which can rage uncontrollable. It can, do, it can do exactly what the commandments tell us not to do. Kill, bear false witness. It can destroy somebody's life. It can really kill them, cut them to the core, even if you didn't mean it. It can bear false witness and spread lies about somebody. It can start rumors. It can do all of these things. And you can see just how this tongue can be used to curse and to destroy instead of building up. The tongue is very offensive. And yet, for as much as the tongue curses, as you know our tongues curse, it also does the opposite. It blesses. Jesus' words are truly offensive. They can feel as if sometimes they are a curse in our own lives. They can feel as if they are counter to what we're supposed to be and who we are. But Jesus' words are indeed offensive. In today's gospel, we see Peter doing both of these things that James talks about. The, the tongue is able to bless, it is able to curse, and Peter is here listening to Jesus when the question is asked, not even in ten questions, who do people say that I am? And they go and they tell him, they tell him exactly who they've heard, while well, some say Elijah, some say John the Baptist, they might have said Moses, who knows? But one of the prophets, that's who you are. And Peter blesses Jesus with his mouth by then saying, you're the Messiah. And Jesus is right, that's right, that is who I am. But that isn't enough, is it? Because Peter, with the mouth, is blessing, but in a moment he's going to curse because this is so offensive. Why would Jesus do that? What does Jesus have to do? He says, well, here we go. The Son of Man must undergo great suffering, be rejected by the elders, chief priests, scribes, be killed, and after three days rise again. Instead of praising, Peter says, no, no, no. That is impossible. That is not what the Messiah is supposed to do. Maybe he might have even cursed Jesus in a moment and said, No, 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 no. You've got to do something else. And Jesus then, in that moment, when Peter's gone from blessing to cursing, says, Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me the words, the tongue that are life-taking. Don't go in front of me trying to convince the rest of the world that I am not the Messiah, that this is how it is supposed to be. And Peter does get behind the tongue is used for praise. And as Jesus invites them then, as soon as he says, get behind me, take up your cross, and follow me. Follow me into where it's difficult, where it can be offensive, where the tongue sometimes is used by, by evil in which to tear down, destroy. The tongue is used to tell you, you are not a beloved child of God. You are dumb. You are evil. You are impossible to do any of these things where the tongue may curse and hit us to the core. Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me words that are life-taking and instead be life-giving. The ones that praise. The ones that build up and encourage. As the psalm says, I call on the Lord as long as I live. Lord, save my life. I call on you because you have heard me. And we begin to praise. We begin to do like the, the, not just the Kyrie, but the hymn of praise. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. In a world where the words or tongues may be used to curse, we are proclaiming that this is the feast of victory. The one who comes, the one who suffered, died, and is buried, and on the third day rose again. We proclaim as Isaiah says, Lord God has given me a trained tongue, not that I may... No, that, so that I may know how to sustain the weary with the world. 
to take what can be seen like an offensive word in a world that likes to curse and use it to build up. The tongue is a wild card. It goes all over its place on its own, and it can talk, and sometimes we break those commandments, but it also calls out forgiveness and proclaims a good news. And with it, it builds up in a weary world. So set your mind and your tongue not on earthly things, but on the divine, and going out and building up. So when somebody, when you ask the question to somebody, who do people say that I am? And they say things like, well, they think you're a little goofy. They think you're crazy. They think you're a little dumb. They think you shouldn't be following Jesus whatsoever. They may even say, we don't even understand you. The other tongue is used, one that praises God and speaks to you and says, all of that, get over here. Because you are a beloved child of God. And I need you to hear that. To share that good news with others. To proclaim that you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Because of that, so much is different. And that is a life-giving tongue in a weary world. So I pray that you hear the good news, even in a world that likes to speak in curses and try to tear down. Instead, hear a word of praise that builds up and gives life. And share that. Share that with who you are. You never know who just needs to hear that today. Amen.